As you dive deeper into the headphone hobby, you may start to see a divide in what different people value and believe when it comes to headphones and audio. You may hear some people saying that almost everything we hear from headphones comes back to frequency response. This is a controversial statement, especially if you've ever EQ'd two headphones to the same target and noticed that they don't sound the same. You may conclude that the claim that almost everything comes back to frequency response is baseless and something that people say just to validate their own opinion. Well, there is more to it, and I want to try to clear up what I mean if I make that statement, as well show why there's still a reason to have a balance of objective and subjective takes when it comes to headphones and IEMs. Well, first of all, we need to clarify what we mean when we're talking about frequency response in this context. Some do take the statement as if it means the frequency response that you see on a graph when measured on something like a Keymar. This is probably the first point of confusion for many, as you can EQ two headphones or IEMs to have nearly the same frequency response on a graph, but when you listen to it in person, they may still sound different. But what's going on? This is because a more accurate version of the statement would be, almost everything comes back to frequency response at your eardrum. All of us are unique, and just like we all have a unique fingerprint, our ears are different as well. The shape of our penny, ear canal, and the acoustic impedance of our ears affect both what we hear, but also how the headphone performs on our head. Measurement rigs are standardized systems that match the acoustics of an average human, but they are not representative of you yourself. This means that even if you EQ two headphones or IEMs to the same frequency response on a measurement rig, they probably will still have a different frequency response on your own head. As well, unit variation and how you place the headphones on your head will affect the frequency response at your eardrum. So for the point about EQing two headphones to the same frequency response, it's not really feasible without exactly measuring the response of your own head. But then, what about things like speed, detail, or resolution? Well, these are things that people definitely hear. And even many who try to be more scientific still use these terms since they're good descriptors of what's perceived when using certain headphones. But they still maybe aren't representative of the literal properties of the transducer or how it's performing. There is a lot that can be covered on this specific point, and quite honestly, I'm still learning. But as an introduction to this concept, I'll try to cover it in simple terms. On the topic of driver speed, it seems like an easy enough concept. It's just how fast the driver is able to respond to a signal, right? Some may say that a headphone sounds slow or fast, and that certain notes may seem to roll on, while on other headphones they may sound quick or snappy. Is this due to a driver being slow or fast? Well, in order for a driver to make an audible frequency, it needs to be fast enough to do so in the first place. If the driver was slow and lagging behind, it wouldn't be making the desired frequency as you'd expect. Rather, you may see distortions at high frequencies, and the frequency response dip at these high frequencies. But what about when multiple frequencies are being played at once? Surely driver speed comes into play here to play multiple sounds at once and layer instruments, right? Well, for this, it's good to look at a waveform. When multiple frequencies are played at once, they combine together to create a sound wave. Our eardrum is able to take this combined sound wave and transfer the movement from the pressure wave to our cochlea. The wave then moves through the fluid in the cochlea and triggers specific narrowband receptors that respond to certain frequencies. From this, our brain is able to hear individual frequencies from a single combined sound wave. So when a transducer is creating sound waves, it's playing the final combined signal with all the frequencies contained in a single motion. But what about resolution or detail in headphones? This again could be linked back to frequency response. That is not to say that one specific area of frequency response contains detail, or that you can simply EQ one headphone to sound as detailed as another. But the relationship between what frequencies are emphasized in a headphone and the music being played back could contribute to a greater sense of detail or resolution. For example, say that one headphone is playing back music, but a lot of the smaller details and nuances are barely audible. With another headphone that emphasizes those smaller details, it may sound like there's more detail than the other headphone. As well, there is something called auditory masking in which, if one frequency is much louder than another close to it, it can mask those frequencies so that we don't hear them. Applying this to frequency response, if a headphone has a tendency to mask out particular frequencies, it's possible that it may lead to a sense of more or less detail depending on what frequencies are being emphasized or hidden. But even with all this, there is still a human factor to consider. Our brains are easily influenced by non-auditory factors in ways that affect what we hear. For example, when it comes to speech, simply the shape that someone's mouth makes when a word is spoken can change what word we hear, even when the audio is exactly the same. 
Likewise, visual factors can affect how we hear headphones. Knowing their cost, build quality, or even just looking at the frequency response graphs and creating a preconceived expectation can affect what we hear when listening to a particular headphone or IEM. Our brain is always trying to make connection to past experiences and expectations. The way headphones feel on your head, or how much room is inside the ear cup, could also influence how a headphone sounds to you. Open backs may also create more of a sense of openness or width when you hear the ambient noise of your room, which could draw a connection to your brain from the past experience with ambient noise and the room sound. So what does this all mean? To me it means that there's a balance to enjoying audio, recognizing and appreciating the physical and scientific aspects of headphones and IEMs, but also realizing that we still all hear differently, and that it's still best to listen to a headphone for yourself to fully understand how it sounds to you.